Hi everyone, Mason Goodnight again with CORE, Community Outreach Evangelism Ministries. Uh, went out this Saturday night again with a couple of brothers going out and sharing the gospel door to door like we do once a month. And it was an interesting night. <laughs> They're all interesting nights. But this one was a little different because we only had four people show up for the ministry. And as you've heard before on these videos, if you watched or looked at our website, repentanceandbelief.com, you've seen how we kind of set these things up. And we have two separate ministries that work in tandem on this night, on the fourth Saturday of each month, our prayer ministry and our Matthew 10 ministry. And the prayer ministry are the folks who stay behind and pray for the folks in the Matthew 10 ministry who are going out two by two as Jesus sent the disciples to go out and share the gospel with folks. And so while we have folks back praying, we have people in groups of two going out. And sometimes we have three or four groups going out. The last month there was only one group we didn't have anybody back praying. There's only two of us, so we said a quick prayer and we were out on our own. This month we had four guys, but one of our brothers, um, he felt called to pray. He felt like his ministry, his call is to be there praying. And so the three of us, though, felt our call was to be out sharing the gospel door to door. And that's the key. We're not judging anybody to say one is more important than the other. Wherever God's called you, whatever ministry is put on your heart, we're all called to pray. We're all called to share the gospel, but certain of us have a certain calling, a certain gifting, a certain power in certain ways, and at certain times, because God delivers gifts severally as he wills by his spirit. And so he felt that his call was to pray. He's been one of our prayer warriors throughout the months that we've been doing this, and the rest of us have all been guys felt to go out. So the only thing that made it really awkward was we only have three guys. So we have three guys, so how are we going to do this? We always go out two by two, and so we just kind of went out and not only is it the picture Jesus gave us, and there's a, obviously some great reasoning behind that, and no small part of that is the fact I'm a pretty big guy, Jim's a pretty big guy, my brother Rod's no tiny guy either, and uh, we can really crowd a porch, get all three of us on there as well. And it can might be even more intimidating that the more people you get on the porch, it seems like you're ganging up on people. That's what we don't want either, so what we would have is the third brother, we'd rotate through, and one brother would sit out in the street with our little... Um, pamphlet we have, we have a little uh, notepad, we write down addresses and a little bit of info of the folks, whether we just dropped off a package of the New Testament, the big question DVD and the contact info, or whether we actually converse with people. And we got to talk with a few different people that night. We really talked to three uh, people, and we handed out probably about ten packets only because our third conversation turned out to be a real long one, but it ended up being really good. The uh, first guy, first house, we dropped off one packet. The first guy we talked with was while Jim and I were going to the door. Rob was in the street, and he saw a guy at his door and wearing a Ducks shirt for the Oregon Ducks, and he was like, hey, what about those Ducks, you know, and kind of striking up a conversation. And as we were coming off the other house, we kind of walked down and started talking to that guy. It ended up being kind of three of us. Rob kind of stayed back in the street, and Jim and I kind of talked to him, tried to get a packet to him. Interesting thing was is that he wouldn't take the packet. But he talked to us quite a bit, said he was, grew up in a Greek Orthodox church, um, but did not say, and he admitted he doesn't have any faith now, he doesn't believe in anything per se, and he didn't really want to go through much stuff. I tried to go through the good person test with him a bit and tried to see where he was at. And he talked a little bit and recognized that, that yeah, some stuff that kind of makes sense, but he just didn't really want to engage. He seemed kind of just really weirded out that there, we were talking to him about this stuff and yet we seemed like normal guys, we weren't dressed up in, you know, Mormon suits or Jehovah's Witness suits or anything. We were just talking and we were talking about football and, you know, seeing how he's doing and carrying a normal conversation but also getting into the deep spiritual things of life as well. And no matter how we tried to pose it, we couldn't get him to take the packet because we, we didn't want to force it on him. We just wanted to let him know, hey, we're not, we won't bug you again. You don't want us coming around. We give you contact info, but we're not going to keep pounding your door or anything. And, we didn't want to talk, and I felt like he might have been one of those brothers who, um, one of those folks who, just if I had been able to hang on his door and uh, we wouldn't have been there, he probably would have took it and maybe even gone in and read it and watched it, but since we gave it to him, he felt it was just too weird to take it, didn't want to encourage us, as it were. So we went on, dropped a few more packets. The next house we actually met somebody, we met a gentleman, and he, uh, turns out he was a gay man and attends a Unitarian Universalist uh, fellowship. And he was in there because they, they accept him as he is. And I got to share with him that the thing is, is that God saves us where we're at. But the fact is, is that only salvation comes through Christ. I got to go through a little bit of the good person test with him. Um, didn't have to deal with, you know, trying to condemn him for homosexuality. Because that wasn't my goal. But I did to tell him clearly, well, the Bible says it's wrong. I believe homosexuality is wrong because the Bible says it's wrong. Not because I think it's wrong personally. 
it's a matter of what the Bible says. And I said, but all sex outside of marriage is wrong. So any kids out having sex, teenagers at the prom or something, or unmarried couple living together, heterosexual, it doesn't matter. Any of it, sex outside of the, defi the divine setup of marriage that God ordained in the Bible, it's adultery. And we see that through scripture. So, you know, we talked a little bit, <clears throat> got to go over some things, but he was, you know, it finally asked us to leave, but thanked us, shook our hands, and and uh, said our goodbyes. He didn't want to take our packet, but, you know, we had a conversation. We got the gospel to him. We got to share uh, that his necessi he necessarily needed Christ and Christ alone. He wasn't going to do it by religion just because it made him feel good down there at the Unitarian place, but that he needed repentance and faith, he needed to turn from sin and turn to Christ and trust in him alone, and that all the wrongs, all the things that he's done wrong will be wiped away, but he needed Christ. So we got the message, and as we were walking off, like I said, we go two by two, I look across the street, and there's Rod with a lady at her house talking, and it was interesting, Rod told us later, I didn't try to go there by myself, she just saw me on the street and said, hey, what are you doing out there, and called me over, so he went over, turns out she's a Jehovah's Witness and had been one for 40 years, and she felt like, wow, she's the spider and we're the fly, she thought it was great that we'd come, but by the end of our conversation, some 45 minutes later probably, uh, the Lord had really done a mighty work. She uh, had not repented and trusted in Christ, but she was left very frustrated, um, very without answers. We left on good terms. We were, um, it got pretty intense for a while when she wanted to shut the whole conversation down because I was talking with her and the Lord just really came through and giving me answers and giving me little mini sermonettes and being able to answer all her objections and be able to take her stances on the Jehovah's Witnesses points and really show them to be unbiblical, show them that they're pulling verses out of context and when I showed things in context she couldn't give a good answer. Um, I, she was open also to, for me to come back and give more information, we may do that, but it was great. My brother Rod was there and he was kind of the, the soft um, response that helped keep her um, comfortable when she wanted to kind of end things. And, um, he said, well, why don't we let you talk? And it was great because he just was there at the right time to say, Here's five, why don't we just give you five minutes and you just tell us what the gospel is. I tried to ask her, how is it we're saved? How can you, if I'm dying today, if we're walking down the street, you know, it's the middle of the night, it's dark, you know, what if we get hit in the street and die? Or what if we die tonight? What can you tell us? How can we be saved? And she was very arrogant and sarcastic. And um, I even told her that I felt that, that she was being sarcastic with us in her answers and the way she was, because she would come in and say, We'd say something about Jesus, and we'd, we'd talk about the Trinity, of course, and some things. It was great how the Lord just came through, and I didn't have um, anywhere near the preparation to do this type of sermonizing, but the Lord, by His Spirit, moved through me, through the Word that He's been planting in my heart over the years, and was able to answer all these questions and give good context to where finally she was like, well, I just feel like you're, you know, think you're superior to me, and no, no, so I said, I didn't say any of that. I'm just trying to give you the Scripture, and she got really frustrated, but when Rod said, hey, five minutes just go ahead and tell us what the gospel is and she didn't give us the gospel she defended weakly her views on why blood transfusions are wrong and why we shouldn't go to war and I got to answer all those things and show why they were she didn't have a biblical stance for them when we left we left on good terms but we left with her rattled and I'm praying that God is working that the seeds we planted with the true gospel got into her and we left praying for her and knowing that even with the New World Translation that she clings to, that there's enough of the truth that's undefiled in there that even that can save, turn her heart to the true Savior. Because that's all Jesus calls us to do is the parable, not the 30, 60, 100, but the parable of the sower who goes out and sows wheat and sows the seed into his field. He goes in, goes to sleep, he comes out, and the, the stuff is sprouted, grown. And it, it says there in the Greek, as I heard from John MacArthur, that the process is automatos. It's automatically. It does all by itself. God brings the increase. Just like we hear Paul, obviously, making so clear. We throw seed, sometimes we water, but God brings the increase. And so we're just praying that as we didn't share the true gospel with her, that to shut down a lot of her false beliefs about her own religious system to show them to be faulty and that her little verse bites, and despite of her trying to be, thinks she, she was superior and say, oh yeah, well what about this? What about this person? How do you deal with that? And with literally that voice and that type of attitude, but to be able to show, no. Oh, this is, you don't, you don't get it, you don't see the whole context and where this is at. And, and she was really stunned by a lot of stuff and the Lord was glorified. 
So we got to speak with folks. We got to get the gospel out. It was just another exciting, uh, powerful evening out there. The Lord came through mightily. And there were other stuff to talk about, but I've only got like 10 minutes here. So I just want to say God bless you. Thank you so much for your prayers for CORE. And if you feel like it, please swing by. Check out the web page. Again, that's repentanceandbelief.com. See what's going on there and see if maybe you would like to get involved in this type of thing. If you live in the Oregon area, maybe we can even hook up or something show you. Um, but if you're out of the area and you want some ideas of how to do something like this, feel free to check out the info, drop me a line, whatever. Just want to thank you again. Continue to seek your prayers and your support. God bless you all. Spread the videos as you see fit. And uh, keep serving the Lord. Take care.